Hello, uh, I'm Richard Ratton. Uh, this is one of a series of pieces I made out of a uh, slab cut off the end of a very green elm log. This pot was made knowing that the wood was going to warp and it's had a few minutes in the microwave just to dry it out quickly. Now this elm block uh, will be a pot. It's going to be cross grain. Grain runs this way. Um, I've drilled a hole in the middle to go on to the screw chuck and I've taken the collar off the screw so just using the small inside one and uh, I don't need all that screw and so this is a new bit of wood just uh, slight indentation in the middle uh, makes a huge difference to how it functions. You don't really want a little build up on the outside as it tends to keep uh, keep the blank at a slight angle. Just pushes the blank out of kilter. it. So just get rid of this. go down a few more since this is a square blank. Don't want your fingers in there for too long. Right, and because it's fairly long, um, I'm going to bring the tail sign up. And it's a little more out of kilter than I was expecting. So half inch spindle gouge is what I normally rough face work with. bench is rattling here. This lathe isn't hasn't got a huge amount of weight on it. And because this is face work, grain running across, come in from the top rather than going in that direction which will splinter the grain. First little flat area there still. Not too much to go. So just using the left wing of the tool and the full curve on the edge uh, just takes a slightly thicker shaving. I could have a longer edge but I've always found the shorter, fuller curve more efficient. that high. I don't think I do. I think I'm going to hive off this little bit and uh, have that as a, uh, as a separate little bowl. even part in at an angle and uh, 
it's a deeper little bowl than I thought I was going to get. Um, just wondering which tool I'm going to use. see this tool um, in uh, simple bowl nesting. I was too lazy to move the camera so you can see it all here. So we'll see that as a separate little bowl. So this is going to end up as a rounded base. Or a rounded bed. Right, so now we get the broad shape. So the curve I've got here is going to be projected through into the foot to where it will be eventually. So some around here will be fine to grab it. Now that's bouncing around a little bit on the chuck. It doesn't, the small screw chuck doesn't give it a huge amount of support. Just cinch it up a bit, see if that makes a difference. It's very easy to go just too hard and get a bit of vibration. So shear scrape, tilt the tool up on edge. This is less aggressive. for that and I'll turn it round and do the rest from the other side and make sure I've got yeah. okay uh, provided you've got a nice corner for the jaws to sit against that should true it up fine. That foot will come off eventually. Uh, and now shape the rest of the top. Half inch spindle gouge again. Pull back here. looking a bit ball like now so maybe a bit more asymmetry into it. And we're not supposed to go against the grain which I am here. It's slightly easier to see how the shape's developing. Slight flattening just there. Leave that for the moment, come back and do that a bit later. Now, across the front. And uh, reposition the camera so on this occasion you can see what's happening at the tool handle end. 
There are other videos where you see from the uh, hollowing side. Now we're going to take away this bit. Get rid of that line now. And I need a depth hole. I don't know how far I'm going. So halfway between these two. Still getting used to this very aggressive drill. Now this is the quarter inch deep fluted bowl gouge. the square and scraper get the bulk of it out <coughs> the main thing here is I'm holding the tool near the ferrule and I've got the handle up against my forearm or oh, I can even get right over it have it up under my armpit <coughs> Slide the corner around the curve. Now just get an idea of what the get an idea of what the wall thickness is in here. For those of you wondering why I don't blow it out, I do not have a compressor. So I'm down to uh, about 20 millimeters. That's good. So I want a rest which is tapered a bit on the end. So here's the little one that can just get right in. It's nice to have the rest here at right angles to the direction I'm going to be cutting. Just get a bit of support for the tool and have this. Uh, quarter inch deep fluted gouge which has a very long bevel and the idea is going to be to get in like that and go around and I'm aiming for this part of the curve probably get around a little bit further uh, the steep right wing on the asymmetric grind just takes off a pretty good shaving what's most likely to happen is I have a catch when I get or when that comes up against solid material, that there might be a bit of a catch. Ease it in on its side, then roll it anti-clockwise for better shaving. I need to get over the handle and get out of the way of the light.
right so you can see the gap that's how much I took out on that cut and that's what I have I thought substantially less than that Right, and that's how thick it is, down just over an eighth of an inch. And I can feel a shoulder in at about that point. I can probably pick that up with the 3 8 bowl gouge. Feel where the shoulder is. Trouble with the gouges is they produce big shavings. Right, it's got a nice curve, getting still a bit thick around there. Back to the thin one, the smaller gouge to start with, just to get me a bit further around the corner here. thin enough. Back to the three eighths. There's the shoulder. And where it starts chattering means the bevel isn't rubbing so I could have a guard with a steeper bevel but it's easier to do it with the with the scraper and this is a one inch round nose you can feel where I've got to go get a magnet on the top so that gets me to within uh, probably I'm going to allow I like a little bit of extra weight in the bottom of these just because they feel better balanced so whilst it only is just under an eighth of an inch up here I'll have it uh, just over an eighth down there oh, that um, original depth hole was a bit close for comfort And this time I'm going to bring the light down so we can get some light in there and then I'm going to peer inside and have a look as I'm cutting. My rest needs to be up a little bit so when I'm cutting at centre it's tilted down slightly for the negative rake. Got a bit of a cone in the middle and a little shoulder of wood somewhere around there. So I'm coming back to my three quarter inch round nose and pretty much going to feel my way around. I can feel the lump there. So it's the question of going across across the ridge or through the ridge and uh, just trying to keep the tool moving smoothly across where I want it right so that's slight little ridge in there which again I can feel I go gently Now 
I'll go use the heavier one, but in fact, even better across the middle. It's probably this one, which is my bowl scraper. Much flatter radius on the end, and that should take care of the dead center. There is that little little bump. Right, got it. Now I need to do something just to change this a little bit. Um, that shoulder is just not quite sure what it's doing at the moment. And often what I do here is go down from the top. I don't get in the way of the camera. I think I'll leave it at that. I'm not sure it even needs uh, needs anything up here. It's got the grain. I'm sure you're all dying to know how thick it is. It's quite thin. There, now this is measured at an angle, so it is a little bit thinner than that. So it's under an eighth of an inch anyway there. And round at the bottom. I hope it's a bit thicker. Don't believe it's that thick. Maybe it is that thick. So I can take out a little bit more there and down into the base. And so what I'm going to do is just swing it, swing this tool around across the bottom. This is the one inch big heavy one, yes, a bit too thick there. Quite a bit's come out of there. Yeah, that feels much better as the wall thickness. I need a little bit out of the bottom, and that'll be that. find that a bit better. Do that with the uh, 3 8 spindle gouge. Give it a 
bit of shape as well so just a hint of a curve on the top right that will do that that gets sanded so usually about five seconds of sanding will give you an idea of whether it's going to need anything heavier that'll be fine the rest will get done when I turn it round So I can possibly do with a bit of 120 and I'm going to put it in reverse. Now it's very thin just in around there so I've got to be a bit careful and then sand through. This now gets turned round so I can finish the bottom. So if this rim was a bit stronger, I could just put it over a chuck and expand the jaws, but it's a bit fragile for that. I don't want to risk it. Um, so I want to grab it around the fullness of the diameter. And the only bit I had, uh, which would do, or I did have one chuck, but I overcut it, um, made it too large for this. I found a roughed out bowl. A uh, piece of box elder, so that will now go into there, and I've already turned it uh, to fit. And so I just want to nudge that in so that it uh, fits right. And I need a little hammer, a little mallet for that. So I've got a slightly large one. Right, that's running true. I don't want to risk it coming out immediately, so I'll use my little bit of MDF here. It just goes into there. Um, so I definitely don't want the conical center going in because that might go through the bottom. That will keep it secure. And then I can turn this away and round the bottom off. And for that, I can use either of the spindle gouges. I'll use the 3 8 what I normally use. It's a little bit lighter and I can feel more what's happening as it cuts. It's basically a sheer scrape with the wing, or sheer cut with the wing. thinking earlier on very much uh, because I thought I'd be able to sand the whole of the outside at once um, which uh, I can't do from here and I can back that off and just uh, deal with the very bottom. Now this is when you're most likely to have catches because if the wood's barely moving and you push too hard for the wood that's when you're likely to heave the thing out of the chuck. So we're on 180 grits. And the downside of this particular connection is that I can't see the whole shape of the bowl. Uh, but once I've got rid of the bottom, uh, got the bottom done, uh, then I can re-mount this between centers and I'll be okay. See what I'm doing. So it's going to come out. might actually hang around as a chuck for a little while. So I've just made this and stuck a bit of non-slip cloth on the top. Um, there's a little shoulder there so that goes into the chuck and trues it up. This now comes over there. Tailstock comes up, locked down and small bit of MDF 
goes into there and that prevents the cone of the tail centre getting through onto the wood which you probably wouldn't want. So get that running pretty well true. So if you have the end of uh, the bit coming out of the chuck exactly the same shape as the bottom uh, then you can put whatever pressure you like but generally you just need to get it tight enough just to hold it in place and I've got a few little scratch marks to get rid of here which I hope will go with the 240 grit now this is now going into the microwave oven for one minute and I anticipate it will come out fairly distorted. I hope so anyway. So here we are, one minute later, uh, gone quite oval. It's still a bit hot to handle. But it's now inside the rim 41 millimeters that way and 48 that way. So it's moved nearly 3 eighths of an inch. still hot. So when that's cooled down it'll get another minute and that will be enough. And finally this was finished with boiled linseed oil.